We read in the book of Genesis, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. We can tell that light occupies an important place in thought. We can see that it's so important that it appears in the very beginning of the book of Genesis when God created the world. In other ancient thought systems, light also occupied an important place. Plato's allegory of the cave describes prisoners that are trapped inside a cave and behind them is a fire. And that fire lights the room. And between the prisoners and the fire, objects are moved and it casts a shadow on the wall in front of them. According to Plato, these prisoners thought that the shadows were real. And they didn't realize that outside of the cave, there was real light where real objects were. There were not these shadows that flickered across the wall. Later, the French media theorist, Christian Metz, wrote about how when someone was in a theater, they sat in a dark room and a light projected from behind them. It was almost as if their thoughts were manifest on the screen in front of them. It doesn't seem to me that it's very different than what Plato described in the allegory of the cave. Metz thought that this moment, this, this, this time that we looked at the screens was a good point to kind of look deeper into ourselves, into the world around us through analyzing the images that they appeared and what they made us think and what they made us feel. In motion pictures, much like in Plato's Allegory of the Cave, the filmmakers are using things akin to Plato's fire and the objects that get moved across in front of the fire that end up causing shadows. Shadows are, are an important part of creating any kind of visual art, as is the light. Right? Without the light, we can't have the shadows. We have both of these when we uh, are, are creating images. I'm going to use examples from the 1922 film Nosferatu. So there are certain things that, that light can do when, when somebody is creating something. One is that it defines the space. So the light and the shadow together define the space that's supposed to be there. Remember that whenever we're watching a film, we're always looking at a kind of visual transformation or translation that takes place where the maker has turned what was three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional space, meaning the two-dimensional space being the screen that we actually watch an image on or look at an image on, on the surface. So shadows can be used to define that space better. They help us determine what distances are, or they deceive us, rather, into thinking that there's an actual space there that somebody can walk into and out of. We also have different types of shadows that can appear. We have attached shadows. These are shadows that are part of, uh, of something as it appears on screen. They can help define what the thing looks like. We have cast shadows. Cast shadows are shadows that are cast by the object. Sometimes these cast shadows are attached or rather connected to the object where it's very clear that they're they're part of that object they're falling off of that object or they can be disconnected where you see the object and then you see the shadow of the object somewhere else in the scene then sometimes the shadows themselves are used as a cast shadow where something uh, you know a light shines on them something and it casts a shadow and sometimes the independent cast shadow can be part of the visual experience like if we use the exa an example of prison bars, in this image, we don't know if there's actually bars there or not, but it suggests that there are. So this could have been created by somebody standing completely outside of the frame and holding a piece of cardboard in front of it that's cut this way to look as though there are bars. Cast shadows can add drama. We could just as easily show the scene take place here where the vampire comes up but just seeing a shadow kind of adds this other element to it. Lighting can be used to reveal a location. Lighting can be used to create the sense of texture, to make something appear so that whoever is looking at it would think that if they could touch it, it would feel a certain way. In short, light and shadow is always a key compositional element to any kind of visual image it's going to have an effect on how people perceive the images on screen.